So my name is Rob Free. I'm a lecturer in health data science at the University of Leicester, but also the, uh, the director of informatics for the BRC. And that's in that capacity I'm going to be talking to you really today. Um, I'm aware that not everyone knows what the Leicester BRC is, so I thought I'd uh, just give a quick um, overview. So effectively, it's a biomedical research centre. It's funded by the NHS Research Wing, which is the NIHR, the National Institute for Health and Care Research. Um, these are a, a flagship centres. So there are 20 of them throughout the country. Um, and the focus is on translational research. So that's early stage to clinical. That's, that's not um, the, the late stage in the clinic. Um, kind of setting. Um, the BRC as it stands has just been refunded and I'll, I'll give a quick history of that. Um, but we've now got four partners. We've got the University of Leicester, Loughborough University, uh, the NHS, uh, University Hospitals of Leicester, NHS Trust and uh, University Hospitals of Northampton as well. So quick history. Um, so uh, in 2009, cardiovascular BRU, the Biomedical Research Unit started. That was a specific to cardiovascular disease. That was joined in 2012 by a respiratory and lifestyle BRU with the lifestyle BRU focusing on obesity and uh, diabetes. And then uh, in 2016, the, the, the BRU concept was withdrawn and we had to go in as a BRC, a biomedical research center, which combined multiple themes. Uh, so we took the three BRUs, combined them together and added a precision medicine theme. And then at the end of 2022, we were refunded with three additional themes, which are very exciting. We've got cancer uh, environment, which is a, a, a very interesting one, and data and ethnic health. So we now have a, a data theme, which is focused on routine health data. So these are a few of the previous BRC successes. We've uh, contributed to uh, some very large cohort studies and even led some. So the FOSS COVID study was, was a particularly um, high profile national study into long COVID. We've also uh, led the UK REACH study, which was looking at healthcare workers and the uh, COVID-19 outcomes. But we've also contributed to data repositories as well and um, had definite impact on policy with a nice guideline um, contributions. We've also contributed to mathematical modeling and prognosis uh, development. Um, and there's just, there's just a lot of very exciting work going on at Leicester, really. So the new BRC, this newly funded BRC, uh, is six themes, 26 million um, provided over five years to support that. We're looking to focus on multi-long-term conditions and long-term conditions with um, the focus on diagnosis and um, the treatments and things like rehabilitation through this um, precision health research to reduce the burden of those conditions. But we're also looking at using novel discovery science, so things like experimental analysis, genomics, omics, um, transcriptomics, imaging, those kinds of things to, to really um, to, to look at novel hypotheses and try and look across the life course of, uh, of, of, the, uh, of diseases. Um, we're also focusing on, on ethnic minority groups, inequalities, so we're, we really want to work with underserved communities as part of this. And the whole point of this is to combine this excellent research expertise with the infrastructure and, and data integration that we've, that we've got within the um, BRC. So this is the, the structure of the BRC. So in previous uh, BRC, um, the previous BRC approach was to have the, the themes and then to have fairly ad hoc core which would, which would support those themes um, and that would just be around infrastructure development really. What we've done with this BRC is we've taken a little bit further and we've actually formed these platforms that will thread throughout the six themes. So we've got an informatics platform, we've got an industry and commercialization platform, training capacity and, and inclusion platform. And it's the informatics platform I want to talk to you about today. So coming from a data science background, that's my main focus. Um, so we've renamed it the health informatics platform since that, um, that, that image was created. Um, and as I said, the, we really focused on these two um, aspects of the platform previously. What I'm really keen to develop within, the, within this new platform is these three areas. Um, and that's one of the major reasons I'm here to talk to you today. Um, 
So in terms of data availability and partnerships, we're really looking to simplify access to data. Uh, certainly within the BRC, it's been quite difficult even internally to get access to data sets and to see what data sets are there. So we want to try and increase the visibility of those. We also want to work to help integrate data into this secure data environment that Tim was talking about. Um, and there's also some work going on at the Leicester University around a trusted research environment, which will, which will help with that. I think the secure data environments are something that are aspirational and they probably will take a few years to, come, to get off the ground and we don't have a few years, so we are going to have to develop things internally to deal with these things. Um, we're also supervising the data repositories in the meantime and, and, and supporting data extracts from the hospital. Um, and we've got some good uh, relationships with uh, the hospital around that aspect of things. Um, we also have some cohorts within the BRC that we have linked managed data, uh, routine health data with, and we, we help to manage those, those aspects of the, of the studies. Uh, these cohorts also can have, uh, con patients can be recontacted to take part in sub-studies as well. So there's, uh, there's, a, there's a kind of back and forth there, and that's something that the BRC can facilitate. Um, and another key thing is to try and build the relationships with uh, regional partners as well. So we've been, reaching out to Nottingham, and Derby, and Northampton around, um, certainly through the, the secure data environment approach, but also through st strategic bids through the BRC as well. But that would obviously be nothing without the people to do it. Um, and this, is, this has always been, uh, it's always been a little bit under-resourced, the informatics and the, the, the data side of things within the BRC. So something I really want to grow is the um, capacity building. So we want to do this through smaller projects. We want to do this through making it a very attractive place to work. Um, we want to develop non-academic data, non data science options so that you don't have to go down that academic path, which has traditionally been a difficult thing for universities to, to bring uh, into focus. Um, and we also would like to, to do outreach as well to, to show people what we're doing and. and you know, show the community that this is an important aspect of, of, of their work. And, but in order to do that, we obviously need to set up some collaborations and bring funding in. And so we're really wanting to facilitate grants internally and externally, focusing around advanced data analytics, AI and machine learning. And um, we've got links with uh, the AI Centre at the university, which we hope will facilitate some of those. We'd like to do some joint development of academic and commercial projects. And we'd also like to do some pilot projects to test the water perhaps before we put in some bigger bids. Um, and from that, we also want to engage the commercial scientific technical community, which is one of the reasons I'm doing this talk. I think it's very important to, to get out there and, and tell people what we're doing, tell people about the opportunities. So what kind of opportunities are there? Um, I mean, I'm no expert in, the, in the, um, the, this kind of field, but from, from my research, there is quite a lot of opportunities of different kind of scales. So we're, we're kind of looking at uh, short things like hackathons or, uh, or data events, all the way through to, to PhDs. There's also the possibility of consultancy and, and um, building grants as well, Innovate UK grants as well, KTPs. I think there's, there's lots of different options and we can, we can certainly test the water with some of these around some short-term projects. And then maybe if those are successful, take them to the, to, to the next level. What would you get from this collaboration that you wouldn't necessarily get from others? There would obviously be the expert insight into the data and systems um, and healthcare data and systems. There's a different type of supervision through an academic supervision approach, which is takes a slightly different angle from perhaps from a commercial approach. There's also potential for generating new IP, knowledge, um, and the opportunity to develop people uh, with slightly different approach in terms of for, for, for your organization or who, someone who works for the university who then moves into your organization. And we can also look at facilitating access to data and, and working with you to, to develop those pipelines. Um, and then there's the more engineering type things and the analytics and uh, the, the feasibility studies as well. So looking at integrating tools and platforms into the BRC. If any of that sounds exciting or interesting to you, please do get in touch. These are my contact details. 
Um, I'm happy to answer any questions in the panel discussion afterwards. Thank you very much. <laughs>